Welcome back to another weekly roundup of cloud gaming news brought to you by yours truly. And remember, if you want to stay up to date with all the latest in cloud gaming, remember to subscribe to the channel, turn on those notifications, and if you enjoy the content, give the video a like. With that said, let's jump into the news. Uh, first up this week, we have some communications coming out around Stadia and Ubisoft. Now, with it coming up to the end of Q2, we see a lot of companies having sort of quarterly financial meetings, which sounds super boring. And it is. But on the upside, we usually get some snippets of news coming out of these. Similar to how Microsoft held their financial conference a couple of weeks ago, and we found out about xCloud being integrated to Xbox Game Pass. So this week, Ubisoft held such a call uh, where they discussed a couple of things. One was the potential delay of AAA titles, which just on a side note, they stated other than a few weeks of lost productivity from moving their developers to working from home, uh, they still expect to release between three and four AAA titles between April 2020 and March 2021. And we assume those titles are going to be Watch Dogs Legion, Rainbow Six Quarantine, Gods and Monsters, and of course, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. However, on that same call, they were actually asked for their thoughts on Google Stadia. You remember recently GeForce Now made a big deal about having the full support of several large publishers, including Ubisoft. So it looks like Ubisoft is fully committed to the cloud gaming model, uh, showing their support for the Google Stadia platform and stating how with the move of their developers working from home, the service had allowed those developers to test their games from the comfort of their own homes. Hang on, I almost caught the dragon. Ubisoft's chief executive officer, Yves Guillemot, yes, Ubisoft, very French, uh, stated that more and more games will be coming to the Google Stadia platform. So just in the last few months, we've seen Monopoly and The Crew 2 launch on Stadia, uh, joining existing titles like Just Dance 2020, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, The Division 2, Trials Rising, and Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which Guillemot states those games are doing well on Google Stadia. I swear to God, we're gonna get some lengthier quotes out of this guy. <laughs> Here we go. Guillemot goes on to say, cloud gaming is coming. Giggity. It's coming at a normal speed, I would say. <laughs> but it's getting better and better. We think at the end of the year, you will see some evolution on the number of players and also on the brands that will be launched there. It's a good long-term trend that will change the industry, we think. Matter of fact, I know Ubisoft loves cloud gaming platforms because for a while they had some exclusive offers for shadow customers but then that could just be the, they're both French. So to finish off in some quick Stadia news, uh, Doom 64 is now available on Google Stadia for just free 99. Rip and tear until it is done. As well as some other fairly decent titles at heavily discounted prices for Google Stadia Pro subscribers. So just to shout out a few of those, and these are all in GBP prices. Uh, the first one, it kind of hit the news because people thought it was like an administrative error. Uh, Google Stadia has said, no, this is the correct price. Uh, first we have NBA 2K20 for £2.40, down from £39.99. Uh, followed by The Crew 2 for £12, down from £39.99. Mortal Kombat for £25, down from £49.99 and Assassin's Creed Odyssey for £18.50, down from £54.99. So when Stadia fanboys were upset about me bashing the Stadia business model in a previous video, this is specifically what I was talking about, those original prices for six month plus old games being full retail. Now, if we continue to see sales like this at these ridiculously heavily discounted prices, then this is something I can get behind. But obviously that's my opinion, but I'd love to hear from you. If you're a Stadia user, have you picked up any of these titles because of their heavy discounts? Or if you're not using Stadia, do these prices kind of encourage you to check out the service? Let me know in those comments down below. Moving on to some Shadow news. And last week, of course, we talked about the triumphant accomplishment where Shadow was able to do what every other cloud gaming service provider has been struggling to do since their launch, and that is get their app approved on the Apple App Store. So in some follow-up good news, uh, at the time of reporting that the Shadow application for Apple TV was still unknown. However, in a quick turnaround, uh, we can now confirm that the Shadow application for Apple TV is now readily available as well, which is great news. Uh, but honestly, to avoid this kind of issue in the future, what you you could easily do is stop using Apple devices. <laughs> Next for Shadow users in Europe who had opted to pre-order a Shadow Ghost, one of these guys, uh, with their pre-order of their new tiers, uh, we finally had confirmation that these are en route from China and will arrive in Paris where they'll be shipped lovingly to their rightful owners. One thing that was noted is these still need to pass through customs uh, and once they arrive in Paris, as we said, they need to be shipped out and the shipping industry, one of those which has been heavily impacted by the thing, so as of yet, there are no solid deadlines for when these would be delivered to customers, but still some good news that they are finally making some progress. So hopefully what we can see after this is the Shadow Ghost becoming readily available for general sale, 
And as always, if there's any updates on that, we'll keep you updated on the channel here. But as always, I would also recommend that you join the Shadow Discord, which I'll link to in the description down below. Uh, and for the latest news, uh, you could always join their Twitch streams on a Thursday night. Uh, as well as that, we also got a blog article with an update on the Shadow VR exploration program. So if you're unfamiliar with what this is, uh, it's currently running in the US with selected alpha testers who have been using a dedicated Shadow application for the Oculus Quest to successfully play Half-Life Alex. So I'll link to that full blog post in the description down below where there's some further details of the testing which has taken place, some of the technical requirements, and they've also stated that this blog post will be updated on a regular basis. Next, I've had my eyes out for you on some updates on Amazon's cloud gaming platform that they're working on, codenamed Project Tempo, but they've got some tight lips and we've had nothing since the announcement last month. But just on a side note, in that video we talked about Amazon's Game Studio uh, and the three titles they're currently working on, two MMORPGs, New World and a Lord of the Rings title, and a third title which is actually due to release this month uh, called Crucible. It will be free to play, it's released on May 20th, uh, and the best way I can describe it is a PvE character building battle royale. I've got no better way to describe that, but with the release coming up, uh, the developers are releasing snippets of information on a daily basis. So if you're interested in checking out this game, free to play, it may as well, uh, go and check them out on Twitter. And finally, a difficult one to miss, if you've even glimpsed at the internet this week, obviously we got the real-time demo of Unreal Engine 5 running on the PlayStation 5. So we're gonna avoid uh, what everyone else has been talking about. We're not talking about 30 FPS versus 60 FPS and would Unreal Engine 5 run on the Series X, blah, blah, blah. It's a minefield, I'm not touching it. I mean, come on, Ed, it's bull crap. It's terrible. I don't know what we're yelling about. But obviously what we did see, and I'll throw the footage up on the screen here, is some amazingly detailed environment models in Unreal Engine 5. And they talked about some new technology that allows them to accomplish this, like uh, Nanite, which allows developers to import full detailed cinematic quality models from apps like ZBrush, uh, which are made up of millions and billions of triangles. If you saw the demo, you would have heard triangles mentioned about a thousand times. Then of course, there's the Lumen system, which is a non-pre-baked dynamic lighting system. Uh, so lighting looks organic with objects casting realistic shadows with the right amount of light bounce. It, it's beautiful. So yeah, Mark, it was a big announcement, but why are we talking about it as part of cloud gaming news? So I'll start off by saying no other news organization talked about this. So these are actually just some of my preliminary thoughts on how this announcement could impact the cloud gaming industry. So firstly, we saw Epic Games CEO Tim Sweeney complement the SSD hardware on the PlayStation 5, saying the PS5 puts a vast amount of flash memory very, very close to the processor, so much that it really fundamentally changes the trade-offs that games can make and stream in. And that's absolutely critical to this kind of demo. So he goes on to say, this is not just a whole bunch of polygons in memory, it's also a lot of polygons being loaded every frame as you walk around the environment. And this sort of detail you don't see in the world would absolutely not be possible at any scale without these breakthroughs that Sony's made. So as we suspected, hardware in next-gen consoles like the newly designed SSD from Sony is what makes demos like this possible. Which led me to think that the hardware which is powering these cloud gaming services would actually need a substantial boost if they wanted to stay up to date and be able to offer these next-gen titles at a similar time to the next-gen consoles. So let's start off by saying Epic Games themselves have said that we wouldn't see this in real-world use until at least mid-2021. But running down the list of cloud gaming service providers, uh, we don't know the full specification behind all of them, but the ones we do know, most of them are actually still running on HDD memory, with the exception of Stadia, which is running on network SSD, which isn't vastly that different to HDD. So the implication here being if they wanted to stay up to date with next gen consoles and offer these next gen games on their services, they would need to install this advanced SSD hardware, not just in a single console, but on a data center level. Like I said, we have a long time here until this becomes an actual issue, but it's just something I thought of off the back of the Unreal Engine 5 demo, and I thought it'd be interesting to bring up. Uh, so as always, your thoughts would be appreciated in those comments down below. But that's it from me in my sick state losing my voice. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you found it enjoyable or somewhat helpful, a like rating would be appreciated. If you have not already, remember to subscribe to the channel, turn on those notifications, keep washing those hands, stay safe. Even if people say you can start to go outside again, err on the side of caution and as always I shall see you in the next one.